People nowadays fail to realize how huge an impact the original Batman had on the film industry when it was released back in the summer of 1989. The hype leading up to it was like static electricity. It was just in the air. But once it came out, it can't be overstated how much it dominated, making metric shitloads of money. Not merely from the box office grosses, but from all the tie-in merchandise, toys, video games, comic books, albums, and second albums. Richard Donner's Superman a decade prior may have proven serious big budget superhero movies could be done, but Batman's smash success confirmed it wasn't a one-off fluke. And Hollywood, being the trend-chasing whores that they are, wanted to repeat that success. So there was this odd period where old pulp and pulp-inspired comic characters were being adapted into big budget Hollywood productions. So while Warner's bashed out Batman sequels while trying and thankfully failing at reviving the Superman series with Tim Burton and Nicolas Cage, Rather than follow suit with popular contemporary superheroes that were benefiting from an early 90s comic boom, the other studios decided to make movies of characters that hadn't been part of the zeitgeist in decades, because that makes sense. As such, the majority of these movies underperformed, failing to become the multimedia juggernauts that the studios were hoping they would be. But that doesn't stop these slicks from being unique and enjoyable time capsules that offer nowadays a refreshing reprieve from all the modern day cape shit. So in this little mini-series of Retro Recommends, I'm going to touch upon each film of this loosely connected cycle. I'll point out their obvious flaws, but more importantly, I'll tell you why they're still worth watching today. So I hope you enjoy these reviews, but without further ado, let's get underway. 